Now that we know how to enter text and select it, we need to be able to format this text correctly to produce a professional document for business. Typography is the style and appearance of printed matter, as defined in the dictionary. Therefore, once you have formatted your text and you print it, it becomes typography. It is the art or technique used to arrange to type text to make written language legible, readable, and presentable when it is displayed. This arrangement includes the typefaces, which is the font, point sizes, which is the size, line lengths, spacings, and styles. As mentioned in our previous topic, the Home tab has all the options or commands that are dedicated to typography. It holds commands relevant to applying fonts, spacings, styles and includes editing of text through find and replace options. The home ribbon is further divided into the following option groups. Clipboard where we find commands to cut, copy and paste text. The font option group which is commands that relate to the options applicable to the font itself. The paragraph option group which is applicable to settings that can be made to entire paragraphs and the styles and editing options group. Throughout these lessons, we may not work with commands or we may work with them. Those we don't work with, obviously provided in higher levels, which is not necessary at this stage, but you're welcome to go and explore and see what other options you may be able to use. Let's take a look at some of our basic formatting options. Right, remember when we select text, if I stand there, I select the entire line or row. If I stand in the middle, I double click and it selects a word for me. Okay, so if I wanted to go and change this text here, I could just select it and I'm changing the font type face and let's say we want to make it Algerian and I want to change the size, I want to bold, underline, italic. Now, remember you wouldn't usually do everything because it all depends on what your organization's standard is because based on images in organizations, they have standard processes and standard face types that are used in all documentation. So make sure that you know which typeface is being used. For instance, most companies use Arial, um, Calibri is a very common one as well. So go and make sure that you know what the standard is. There will be a procedure based on that. All right, then we can go and apply different text effects. For us right now is just to know where we can find the variety of options. If I wanted to go and change the color of text, I can go and change it here and that changes that color over there. All right, now I want to just show you a bit of copying and pasting. If I right click and I select that whole word, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut and I'm going to say Control C. Otherwise, I could also just click on copy here and I'm going to paste this again using Control V, which is the um, paste shortcut. Otherwise, I could just click on paste over here. Okay, I'm just going to continue doing this for a while so that we've got a couple of lines. Okay, now I have a whole lot of different lines. Now, can you see if I click in the left hand side, it actually highlights that as well. Let's go and take a look at some of the paragraphing options in terms of alignment. This line, for instance, I wanted to have center, so I click on center. Can you see there the little lines actually show us that it's in the middle? If I wanted it on the right, I could just set it to the right. So if you're busy with a document and you have to align something on the right hand side, you know where to go and do it. Then we have the justification option, which actually makes both edges of the document straight on either margin, but it does increase the spaces between letters. So make sure that your lines are full before applying justification. The other option we have is the line spacing between paragraphs. Can you see there how my line spacing changes between the paragraphs, how it's going bigger and smaller, all right? Most documents, if they're readable documents or if they're meant for um, actual reading through, um, where people have to see information um, clearly, then you'll use a one and a half line spacing is the standard best practice used for that. Then I have an additional option here to fill my, I can fill my paragraph. So if you want a paragraph to stand out, you can fill it with a particular color. And then you can also place borders around a paragraph as well. And those are the standard basic options um, in the formatting options of 
Word or Microsoft Word for that matter. Go and play around with those and have fun. So just as if you've lost something in your house or you want to buy something new to replace something that's old, you can do the, exactly the same here, just in the context of text. So if you've got something in your document that needs to be replaced over 100 pages or 200 pages and you need to make that replacement um, quite quickly, it would be really time consuming to go through each page um, individually. So we have our find and replace option, which is an excellent option if you need to make multiple replacements of the same kind throughout a document and or even just to find information. Let's take a look at how this works in practice. So I've just opened up an example document here for us to go and find because it's a long document. Um, it's about 43 pages and it's on the unit standard about HIV and AIDS. If the document, let's say for instance, we needed to find the word cells. Okay, so I'm going to click on my find option here, remember on the home tab, and I'm going to click on find, and it's going to bring up a navigation bar for me. Depending on the, the um, version of the Microsoft that you're working on, if you're working on 20, 2013 and lower, it will bring up a little screen for you where it says find and replace. You'll execute exactly the same options here. Good. So let's say I wanted to find the word cells or cell. Okay. The minute I start typing, it actually goes and looks for the words for me. In your case, it will be actually on the screen. It won't open up a pane over here if you're working 2013 down to 2010. Now, you can see here, in my case, it's actually highlighted the words for me because I can go and look for a letter or just parts of a word. All right, if I wanted to replace those options, I could just click on the replace option and then it's going to ask me to replace with what? And I'm going to say replace cell with cells, for instance, and I can either decide to say replace all or just replace that one, which will be the first one that it's actually found. And then I can say find next. So I don't need to go and just replace everything. I've got an option to be able to select which ones I want to change and which ones I don't want to change. So by clicking on replace all, it will just replace all the options and tell me how many replacements it's made. If I go find next, it's gonna take me through to each option individually. Go and try that out and have fun. Additional paragraphing options allow for paragraphs to be structured correctly and or change the display of information. Bullets and numbering options help when we need to display lists of information in different levels. For instance, we have a main heading to a section, then we have a section divided into smaller sections. Number, numbers and bullets help us to be able to distinguish between sections and paragraphs of information. Let's go and take a look at how we apply this. Right, so let's have a practical look at exactly how we apply these. All right, yeah, I've got some text that is suitable for bullets or numbers, um, particularly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. All right, so I've selected all the text that I've already put in, and I'm going to click on my drop down arrow for my bulleted lists. And here it gives me a number of bullets that I can actually apply. All right, now these are my most recently used. I can go to my document bullets or I can go to define new bullet. All right, so for this purpose, just not to make the recordings too long. Um, so I'm going to let's just choose this colorful one and I'm going to choose that one and see that it applies there. It also increases the indents, okay, on my um, ruler. All right, if I want to move those, which we're going to do a little bit later on, I can just click on the bottom part of that and I can just move them to the beginning of the margin. All right, but we'll have a look at that later. Okay, seeing as though my text is still highlighted and it's still selected, I can now go and change these if I wanted to apply a numbering list. So I click on the numbering list option. I can then go and search for a numbering list that I want for my documents. All right, so if I click on that, it's now numbered in Roman numerals. All right, go and have a try at that. Make sure that your information is nicely set out first before you actually apply these because otherwise you might be finding yourself doing a lot of manual work. All right, okay, good luck and have fun. 
In previous topics, we looked at a couple of documents in terms of um, business administration. We looked at agendas, minutes of meetings, procedures, um, policies, all those sorts of documents of administration. Now, nine times out of 10, you'll probably find that there's templates in the workplace and templates are predefined document layouts for specific document types, like the documents we just mentioned. These templates provide a framework for the main and sub-level content that must be included in the document. By completing each section with the relevant content suited for your specific purpose, like you have to type up an agenda for instance, using a template you could just make sure to complete the different sections with the information related to your agenda. Microsoft provides a variety of templates that are easy to use and customize for your purpose. Let's take a look at how we can use these. Great, so let's have a look at how we insert templates or where we can find predefined templates. We click on the file tab. As my system starts responding, taking a while, right, there we go. And I click on the option, uh, on the new option. All right, not the open option, the new option. And on the latest version of, of um, Microsoft, it actually gives me a list of all the templates that are available here. And these are predetermined and it gives the name of the type of template. So this is a red and black letter. That's a student report. This is a timeless letter, um, origin resume, origin report. So I have a variety of templates available to use the template. All I need to do is click on it and it will open in my document. So I'm going to click that example and edit my template for me with control contents, which we're going to learn about in the next section. All I need to do now is I need to go and put in the details that are necessary. All right. And add information as instructed. Okay. That will help me remember that templates, sorry, remember that templates are also just exactly that. They don't always allow for individual um, headings, but at the end of the day, what you'd want to do is also take, insert or remove additional headings um, to suit your specific needs. Okay, so let's say for instance, you don't have, you have notes to financial reports, all right, and you don't have that in your organization, then you'll remove this section um, and add whatever is necessary for your organization. So you don't have to this, this is just a basic idea and a basic template. If I wanted to save a file as a template, I click on file and I'm going to go to save as. And then underneath in the file type, I'm just going to use template. So let's say for instance, I have created a, a document and I want everybody to use the same document. All right. Then I would go and I'd save it like this. The icon next to the document actually changes into a little booklet and it's got a little yellow line at the top. And that's how you can differentiate that it is a template. Go and have a look at those, make sure you know how to do it and how, you know how, where to find templates and different templates. I'll speak to you soon. And that's a wrap for document formatting. Let's take a look at what we've learned. The way in which text is displayed is called typography. The home ribbon contains all commands for formatting text, paragraphs, styling and editing options. It is important to know the fonts and styles used in your organization for uniformity and standard image. Information displayed in bullets and or numbers must be suitable for the use of bullets and numbers. Explaining something using bullets and or numbers is not suitable. Templates are predefined document layouts for specific document types.